Hey, YouTube growers and no-till nuts. I'm the Rascal Farmer, and welcome to another edition of No-Till, No Worries. Here we are down in the main room in the no-till lab. It is Saturday. It is day three of flower. And things are shaping up. Get a closer look. Jeez, looking good. Second cheese. These two that I just showed you, I am going to leaf strip. And then this one here in the corner, I am going to leave alone and just let her go. So we got three cheeses, and we're going to kind of do a side-by-side -side here with leaf stripping and not leaf stripping. Blue Dream. Looks like she's starting to come out of her funk. I am going to come in and pop that leaf right off and let some light in. I'm going to start doing that as I go around. Green ices have exploded, man. They thickened right up. Hard to believe that I leaf stripped the crap out of these things. But I am starting to notice a little bit of yellowing on them. I have really tweaked this strain out. I am fully convinced that what I did was uh, created an epigenetic defect in my plant. Something I didn't even know existed. Always kind of thought, you know, strains just degrade over time, but not so. Apparently, from what I am, what I am learning, all you got to do to screw up your strain and get what we've always called strain degradation is to just have a sick mom and clone her. And I have to believe that's what I have done here. Yeah, a little bit of yellow. I'm going to go through and I'm going to uh, give them a little cow mag. I am going to hit them with a little bit of fish and kelp. And then I'm going to top dress with some bone meal. And that should be all set for flour. Cover crop. I can't keep it under control. I've cut it once since the last video, and I have to do it again. That grass is a pain. Hate it. Hate it. And as I said, I didn't mulch it. I was going to mulch it down. I didn't do it. I've got so much mulch in the top of those pots. There's two and a half, three inches of mulch in the top of those pots. I don't really want any more of this run. So I kind of left it alone, and I'm just going to hack and whack on that grass until it goes away. All right, I'm going to get busy on some watering, and then we'll pop back in here and show you what it looks like when I get finished. All right, I'm just about ready to give them some water. I have top-dressed with some crab meal with some bone meal, um, I top dress with some kelp. And I'm gonna hit them up with some RO water and let them rock. You can see that I have leaf stripped this cheese pretty well, kind of opened it right up towards the bottom. And you're already starting to notice, or I'm starting to notice a difference between the leaf strip cheeses and this one over here in the corner. Because you can't even see down to the bottom of that plant. And the big difference that you're going to see is here. When you start to get down here and you start to look at these lower branches, and you start to look at the leaf development here, and the size of these lower bud sites. Ooh. And I think... Looking at this one here, I'm going to pop that off as well and kind of open a little bit of light there, right down to that lower one so that this grows up. If you come over here and you look, you're starting to see the same thing with the lower branches here. They've got a lot of development. You contrast that to what you see over here on this one. And they're much smaller. They're just not getting any light. 
So what I think you're going to see, and what I expect to see, is you're going to see larger top buds on this plant and a whole bunch of scraggly crap that nobody wants down there below. But on these, you're going to see smaller top colas, but you're going to see dense snugs from top to bottom. And if you were to turn around and weigh the actual smokable portion of each plant, you're going to find that these two cheeses are going to outweigh that one in the corner. I will be shocked, to say the least, if that's not what we find when we actually put it on scale. You can see I've done the same thing here. Open that all the way to the bottom. I want the light to get into those little bud sites right down there so that those start to develop because we're in the business of growing plants to smoke bud, not leaf. Done the same thing here. Not too drastically, but when I see something like this, like here, if I can't Move that out of the way. Well, see, there's another little one right down there, and that's not getting any light. So why don't I just come in here and pluck that little sucker out. Now we'll get light all the way down there to the bottom. All right, I'm going to hit them up with some water. And we'll move on to the next thing. Oh my goodness, happy Easter everybody. It is day four of flower in the main room and everything is on point. Looking at the cheese. Looking gorgeous. The second cheese. I've sprayed them with method one. Hit them pretty hard today. And in a minute, I'm going to show you why I've got no flyers either. Once I flip that switch into flower, if it flies, it dies. But I told you I have this like fascination with flypaper. And I do. And, and that's generally how I get rid of all these bugs. And uh, they're gone. I told you ladybugs have a fascination with flypaper, and they do. And uh, while I like them here in the room when we're in veg, once I get into bud, I don't want any bugs at all. Nothing flying around, creeping around, nothing crawling on my plants, getting into my flowers. And I know I'm going to probably piss a whole lot of people off with the way I got rid of these ladybugs, but... The story about these ladybugs is in their infinite wisdom, the state of Michigan released a bunch of Japanese ladybugs years ago to control a pest. And the damn things bred with our ladybugs here in the state, and we are so overrun with ladybugs. I didn't release any of these. They came from up in my eaves. If I was to actually go up into my crawl, you'd probably see thousands of them where they've been wintering up there. And they just make their way in, and it's not uncommon in this area for people to come into our, uh, you know, to, when you're talking to people in, uh, in the grow shops, you know, what do we do about ladybugs? Well, you go out and you buy yourself a 10-pack of flypaper, and when you flip the switch over to bud, you let them have it. It'll get rid of them. There's not another ladybug crawling around this room. Not a fly. Not nothing. We're happy. All right. Well, we got a lot of projects going on over in the veg tent with the little babies. So let's go take a look. Well, here we are in the veg tent. And look at this. The little baby ninja popped up. So uh, looking really healthy. That is growing in ocean forest. And if anybody ever says, oh, that's too hot for seedlings, sometimes yes, 
sometimes no. Even within the same strain, I find a variance with this stuff. You're going to find varying degrees of like nutrient burn from this soil being too hot. I guess I should have probably used my Pro Mix. It's been so long since I actually grew a seed in uh, Ocean Forest. I didn't really realize, I, well, I didn't remember how damn hot it is. But you can see here on this one, a little bit of burn on the edge. Not, not too much, but you see it. That's definitely a tip burn. And that's from soil being a little hot. That's what a nutrient burn looks like. And if you look at this ninja fruit, this one got smacked. So that one's in pretty rough shape. The other one looks pretty good. And some of these, some of these don't even look like they got touched at all. That's another ninja fruit. Ninja fruit. My triceratops, ninja fruit. It is going to carry triplets the whole way up, it looks like. And another ninja fruit. A struggling little code black. My blue dream clone. The cheese clone is just going bananas. It's loving it. Actually, that wasn't a code black. That's a green crack. My goodness. I can't read my own writing. Another green crack. Green crack, and they didn't get much, they didn't really care. This little one looks like he's struggling a little bit, or she, that's a found. A little bit of tip burn there. None on these. So even in the green crack strain, I got two that, you know, laughed at this ocean forest, and one that's really struggling from it. You're going to see that with the, uh, with the Code Blacks, too, there's a big variance. Code Black. Code Black looking real strong. That's another Code Black, a little funky. And then one that's struggling. So I got to believe if I would have used the, the Pro Mix probably as my seed starter, I probably wouldn't have had any problem at all. But I'm going to get ready to do some amending to this one right here. I'm going to pull this camera up and show you what I'm doing. So when my clones or my seedlings look like they're starting to green up, you can see this one's starting to look real nice. It's got some fresh growth on it. I want to make sure that I get the fungal activity and the bacterial activity in this soil up, and I want to get all of that living soil starting to get activated in there. I'm going to grab some kelp. I'm going to throw some kelp down. I'm going to grab some crab meal. I'm going to grab some mycos. Here's where my fungal activity comes in. And I'm going to kind of sprinkle some micro, mycos around the top because I'm actually coming in with some clover seed. And I want to get some fungal activity up there with that clover seed, which I'm coming in with now. I don't know how this is looking on the camera. You're looking at my sleeve. That's perfect. Sprinkle a little bit of clover seed in there. And I just want to kind of mix this in a little bit just into the top surface. As that clover seed starts to work its way down into the soil, some is going to make good soil contact, some is going to come up immediately. Some will come up later on with subs you know, subsequent waterings. Alright, I'm going to kind of mist that down with my sprayer lightly just to get that soil moist so I don't just to get it started to absorb a little water then I'm going to come in with a mixture of one ounce per gallon of my fishing kelp fertilizer and this does have a dose 
This is something that I've had since my hydroponic days. HydroGuard. Total bacteria, two milliliters per gallon. And that's going to start my decomposition. And if I notice that maybe the bacterial action in my pots isn't quite where I want it, I might give them a shot of that stuff. I always add it to my compost teas. If you ever run into a situation with root rot, HydroGuard is the only thing that's going to save you. If you run into a situation where your water in your hydroponic system is not holding enough oxygen and you start to get some root rot, throw it in there. Well, there you go. I'm going to let this thing drain, but that's generally how I'm going to dress my pots. I'll do that as soon as I start to see my clones green up. And generally when seedlings get about their fourth or fifth good leaf set and look like they're starting to, you know, want that initial dose of fertilizer, that's generally where I'm going to retop off the pots, top dress, and then add a little bit more clover to it. So. There you go, we'll throw that one back in the room and then I'll show you what I did to my cheese. I did the same thing to the cheese earlier, but I topped it. I topped it right there. I want this thing to start pushing up and if I can get this to look like an umbrella, that's kind of what, and I'll flash up a picture of what I did last year for the plants in my greenhouse. I'll show you one of my, uh, one of my pictures. And when you're looking at this and you see the shape of this umbrella-like canopy, I've already started to get that thing topped. It's got a bunch of tops. The branches are going to explode out, and then I'm going to start tying them out. But that's kind of what I'm looking for. Last year, most of my plants ended up looking like this one that you see on the screen. And it was like this three-foot tall by three-foot you know, diameter canopy, and then they just exploded when they went into the greenhouse. And basically, by the time they got all done, they looked like this picture of this one right here. You were looking at the Tangerine Dream, I believe it was, that I grew last year, um, the way it started out and then the way it uh, finished up. So, pretty cool. We got some other stuff going on. I'm going to go through the veg tent and... Uh, Water what needs to be watered. I've sprayed method one throughout the main room as I talk to you from a million miles away. All right, guys, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. I'm the Rascal Farmer, and I'll see you next time on No Till No Worries. Say goodnight, ladies. <laughs>